Joy, all you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Cohort 2 Onboarding Webinar. Today, we'll be looking at insights on quality assurance and product management. And I have here with me some experts who will be taking us through this tech field. I'm just going to introduce them. We have um, Ahmed Idris. Ahmed Idris is the executive director at Innovate Lab. He's a goal-driven individual whose mission is to give the best part of himself to whatever he does. He believes in the pursuit of excellence. He's a passionate entrepreneur with experience in product management and digital marketing. He helps young people to get access to tech skills that will enable them to empower themselves, their families, and their communities. He previously led communities for both Facebook and Google. In 2016, he co-founded Code Pyramid, a local tech community, which has since trained and empowered over 5,000 youths with employable skills. His activities led to his induction into the Global Shippers Community, which is an initiative of the World Economic Forum. He's also a climate ambassador for Global Youth Climate Network, which is a program of World Bank Youth Group. He believes that with technology, we can overcome most of our local challenges and he strives to create a bridge towards that. Okay, that's about um, Ahmed Idris. We also have Tommy Daniel Adishina. He's a passionate STEM educator and advocate for kids. And with a background as a programs manager and leadership expert, actively managing products and ensuring quality assurance. Tommy Daniel is committed to inspiring creativity and excellence in young adults. And through engaging programs and mentorship initiatives, he is on a mission to cultivate a generation of forward thinkers. So I'm sure um, everyone listening you would agree with me that we have some very phenomenal um, professionals in our midst. So um, if you'd like to kick things off, you can um, go on to give off, give us a an overview of um, what the, you know, what we're going to be talking about today, which is um, product management, you can give us an overview of the product management um, field and what learners are supposed to expect while pursuing a career in this tech field. All right, thank you very right. much for that beautiful introduction. And hello, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I prepared, uh a short slide I would like to present, if that's okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, let me pull that up. Okay. And on the second thought, I think I've sent it over. I don't know if you could do it from your end. And if it's not possible, I'll just try. Do you want me to you want me to share the slide for you instead? Yeah, if you do have it, but if it's okay, if you, if not, it's okay. I could just uh, do it now. Okay, let me just bring that up. Uh, Tony, if my my screen should be up though. If, uh... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right, let me know, please, if you can see the screen. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, awesome. Uh, hello, everybody, once again. And uh, my name is Amy Debris, and uh, I'll be talking to you about who a product manager is. And in essence, we'll be talking about uh, product management as a field and also as a career. Uh, before that, uh, take us quickly through uh, our what the discussion is going to look like, uh, sort of like the table of content where, we're going to, where I'm going to do an introduction about myself, my background, and then we're going to talk about uh, what is product, what is a product, and then who a, who a product manager is and what they do, the skills that is required to become a product manager and the reason or why you should become a product manager. So uh, 
as Ella mentioned, my name is Ahmed Idris, and I'm an entrepreneur. And I'm also the current executive director at Innovate Lab. Uh, Innovate Lab is an innovation and impact organization that supports uh, individuals, entrepreneurs, and startups to create social and economic impact uh, solution. Uh, we do that through uh, capacity building, networking, and uh, uh, sometimes access to uh, resources. I'm also a certified product manager and also a community manager, as earlier mentioned by Joy, and a member of the World Economic Forum uh, Global Shapers Community. So as a product manager, I've been fortunate to work in a number of solutions and products across various uh, various categories, uh, which include uh, Sitemap, which is a uh, a blockchain powered uh, solution to help land owners and land buyers you know uh, adashi is a platform is a solution that helps on banks and smes to save and to build credit and postpay is a solution that helps employees who are looking for credit before they receive their salary to buy food items and emergency solution and then we have Bila, which is a an, a bill payment solution and platform that also does uh, things like revenue collections and sort of uh, one other solution I've been fortunate and glad to work on is called Zabe, which is an election monitoring app that was used uh, during the 2015 and the 2019 general elections in Nigeria. And what it does is to, it helps to aggregate, uh, you know, vote counts right from the polling units, so that uh, with with the uh, with a view on a dashboard. Uh, you know, political parties, stakeholders, and election monitoring organization will be. Uh, could easily, you know, predict and count the number of votes that are coming in. So on that note, uh, I think we'll dive straight into, into our presentation. So um, what is a product? Essentially, the word product manager itself, this, uh, how would I put it? It's, it? it's a word that actually describes itself, a product manager. But what is a product? Now, this is where a lot of people tend to get confused, especially those in this era. We think of product as either just something tangible that we see, but product will also be something that's intangible. So something tangible could be, could be a physical item like a smartphone, you know, like an Apple or iPhone is a product. It could also be a mobile app, which is digital, right? And you could have an app like WhatsApp, a WhatsApp is also a product. It could also be a service. So let's say uh, you're subscribing to Netflix or you're subscribing to a platform that delivers you a kind of service monthly or weekly. That service in itself is also a product. It, a product would also be an experience. So you go to a museum, you go to a, a zoo. You know, the way the, the zoo or the museum is designed to, to, actu to actually, you know, interface with... Uh, people that come in to visit is also a product. So a product could either be physical, it could be digital, it could be a service, and it could also be an experience in essence. Now, the bottom line for what a product is, is that it solves a problem or it fulfills a need. So as you might have seen from the examples of products that I shared, not all of them solve problems. Some of them just fulfill a need. So at the end of the day, a product is something that does two things. That it solves a problem or it fulfills a need. So um, then who is a product manager, right? I'm sure this is the question most of you have been asking, right? Well, uh, to put it simply, a product manager is someone that helps to bring product to life, right? But also, ensures that that product is, you know, continues to serve the purpose that it's been designed or developed for. So a product manager works with different departments of different sectors of within a team or within a company. So for example, for the purpose of this program, which is more focused on a product, a digital product manager or a product manager that works in the digital space, so we're going to talk about, uh, for example, you have a tech company which, which is trying to build a solution that is, let's say, an app that helps people to find their way, you know, during during uh, traffic. Maybe there's a lot of traffic and you're trying to build an app 
that helps you to find the shortest route to wherever you're going. To. So, and within that team, you are going to have a product designer, you are going to have an engineer who is a software developer or software developer development team. You're also going to have marketers or promoters who are going to, you know, promote the product or, you know, get insight from the users of that product. So your you as a product manager, what you do on that team is to ensure that these various departments are aligned, right? You you ensure that the various departments are aligned. So you bring all these departments or all these team of people together in order to build a solution. And as a product manager, you're also the voice of the customer. It means that regardless of what your team are building, you as a product manager is the one who ensures that the team builds exactly what the customers have been asking for or the customers are looking for, or it solves the customer's problem directly. You understand? So these are this is what a product manager you know, does. And also as a product manager, you are in charge of a product vision and roadmap. So you develop how that product in essence is going to come to life when it's going to come to life, the timeline, how long it's going to take for that product to come to life. And then you work with these various departments of people, the engineering, the design, the marketing team, and to ensure that the development of this product is done based on you know the milestone that you've set for yourself and everything that you have envisioned for that product. So essentially, you are a mini CEO. This is what a product manager, who a, who a product manager is. So, then what do you do, right? What do product managers do? Well, there are basically five things product managers do. First one is they help to conduct research, you know, to understand what is it that customers or users are looking for. What's the trend right now in the market, right? So for that app that is going to help people to find the nearest or the fastest route to wherever they're going to, uh, you know, when they're strapping. So the product manager comes in to talk to customers who in their daily lives have to go through traffic to go to work or to come back from work. And this is what, this is the job of the product manager. What he does is, or what they do is the interface with the customer to conduct what we call market research. And then once they've gathered these problems or the needs of the customer, they go on to define the product vision or the product strategy. So it could be that the product vision could be that maybe it's not even an app that they need, it's probably a hardware solution, right? Or even if it's an app, it's not probably an app that needs to be designed in a very complex way, it's probably an app that does one or two things. So the idea is that you, just, you define the product vision and you also define the product strategy. And then you, call, you create what is called a product roadmap, which is going to, in essence, break down what that product is going to have, the future is going to have, user stories, uh, what technology you are going to use, mm -hmm. you know, timeline, you understand? So this is what a product manager does. And then he works with all the other stakeholders, and stakeholders include the company, uh, you know, the other departments that we mentioned, including even the users that we mentioned. These are all stakeholders. So he worked with all these people to bring this product to life. So like I said, he's a mini CEO. He ensures that everybody is, you know, doing what it's supposed to, or what they are supposed to do in order for this product to come to life. And then once the product is live and it's in the hands of the users or the customers, he now uses, he now uses data to analyze and measure the success and impact of this, of this product. And he uses this information to now see where to improve this particular product. So this is generally or basically what uh, uh, a product manager does. There's a lot to what they do, but in essence, this is what their job entails. So what do you need? What are the skills that is needed to become a product manager? There are five, but not an exhaustive list. These are like the basic things that you need. It's communication skills. You need to be able to communicate effectively, you know, with the people you're working with, stakeholders, you know, customers, engineers, designers, even your, your CEO at the company or your head of product uh, management or product development. 
So you need to be able to learn how to communicate with these people. And communication can be in different forms in written, you know, it could be, you know, maybe a phone call, various ways. But then communication is beyond just communication. So there are other, you know, things that are attached to it. So you must be an excellent communicator. And then you must be able to have critical and analytical thinking. Because most of the time, not everything seems to, looks like what it seems rather, right? So you, you must be able to be critical and analytical in your thinking, such that you, you like they say, think outside the box, right? So as a product manager, you, you have to do this almost all the time because you are at various points, you are going to face different challenges. You know, it could be from the customer side, it could also be from your team side, it could also be something beyond both your team and your customers. So you just have to learn to, you know, be critical and analytical in your thinking. Then you need to be organ uh, you need to have high organizational skills. You need to be know able to know how to organize your files, your your resources, your data, your communication, everything that you deal with in a day-to-day -day basis. Your interaction with your team, your interaction with the customer, you need to be highly organized. Because as a product manager, you wouldn't want to, you know, be found, you know, not having proper organization when it comes to your ability to deliver a solution or a product. So you, mo you must know what where an item is or a resource is or what an, a piece of information is or how you store or manage those particular information at any moment in time. So organizational skills is very important. Then you need to be adaptable at all times. And this is because sometimes what you think you know is not what is probably going to be the best way for you to arrive at where you're going to. So the solution you're building, the product you're building, may, necess may not necessarily be the way you envision it. So you have to adapt a lot. And then sometimes adaptation means that you might get a lot of pushback from your senior management, for example, your team, your CEO, or your even your engineers. And sometimes even the customers might not just be going along with the certain things that you know, you might have ambition as a product manager. So you need to be able to, uh -huh. uh, to adapt. Then you need to have a leadership skills. And leadership doesn't mean having a title, a CEO, a leader. A leader doesn't have to be someone with a title. You know, leadership is just the ability to guide people you know, to deliver the right results, you know, with the resources and tools that you have. So this ability to be able to inspire and to guide and to lead your engineering team, your design team, you know, and sometimes even your senior management is what is required for you to become an excellent product manager. So why do you why why is it important to become a product manager? Why product management? Why should you become a product manager, especially in this period or in this era that we are? So there are a lot of reasons. Because product management as a skill is very fulfilling and rewarding career path, right? You can build products that have really impact on people's life and make real changes. I gave an example with an app that I was really, really happy to work on, which was the uh, election monitoring app. I saw firsthand how that app was used, you know, to, to checkmate the cases of election malpractices during the 2015 and 2019 election in a lot of states and local governments. So this is the firsthand you know, some of the benefits of you being a product manager. You see how the products you build come to life and are being used and that impact unfolding right in front of you, right? So, and product management as a field is very dynamic, but it's also challenging, but it's dynamic because every day there's a lot of new technologies and the new trends are coming up. So, and it's always on you to learn, to know how to tackle those things, right? And another benefit, so becoming a product manager is that right now there's a lot of high demand for product managers and the salary is pretty good, right? And it has a very, very strong career. Like there's a lot of career growth opportunities as a product manager, right? So, and finally, as a product manager, you know, you are always at the forefront of, you know, innovating and shaping new products or services, right? So it allows you to be, you know, where the real change is taking place and you get to be part of that particular uh, change. So thank you very much. Um, 
happy to do this. Uh, my name is Ahmed Dus once again, and my email is here. And if you want to hit me up on social media, Twitter preferably, you can just use my uh, username. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Uh, um, I think I, I got a lot of things from what you said. I hear that, you know, product managers are high in demand. I hear that the salary is good. So to everyone listening out there, if there's any other thing you picked out, feel free to drop that in the chat section. And please um, stay with us. We'll be taking questions from the audience before um, towards the end of this um, webinar today. Um, Daniel, would you like to go next? Like give us a, an overview of what the quality assurance field entails. All right, thank you very much, Joy. It's good to meet everyone on the call today. I hope I'm audible. Very well. All right, so we'll be sharing brief, I'll be sharing brief insights into quality assurance, more like a roadmap for everyone who is about starting up. Um, thank you very much, Idris Ahmed, for that session. It was great um, bringing this on the back of that because quality assurance is nothing without um, products and services. So basically um, what I do in my role and on my job is to ensure that the products that are being built and the services being offered have top-notch and excellent delivery to clients and customers. So my name is Tommy Daniel Adeshina, as said already. I head learning and instruction at Early Founders, which is a company um, set up to teach coding to children and innovation as well equipping them with the necessary entrepreneurship skills for them to become founders as early as the age of 16. So um, Early Founders has found a major gap in our education system that doesn't equip students or graduates to actually set up for themselves. I delved into the world of coding and tech and all of that after earning my BSc and I had to learn all of this from the scratch. Early Founders is basically trying to bridge that gap and ensure that people are ready for the world as soon as they are done with their school. I am also pioneering an initiative for global change through Sequoia, um, a company that is set up to actually help organizations, help companies to hire the right staff, train the staff they have already to ensure that they're ready for the world of technology and that they can have the required impact in today's world of technology, including the multi-generational and diverse workforce we have in the world today. Okay, so very quickly, quality assurance in the tech industry basically is all about um, ensuring that products meet and even surpass the expectations of customers. So if I am purchasing a cup of milk, I am expecting to taste milk, but quality assurance wants to offer you something beyond milk. So you're testing milk, but something has to stand out in this cup of milk that makes me want to leave my house to go and get that particular cup of milk instead of making it in my home. That's quality assurance in just a statement. We'll be looking at key elements of quality assurance as well, just a bit of a guide and pointers for everyone who wants to or who would find themselves in this space or in roles that require this particular service. First things first, we have to ensure customer satisfaction. So whatever your role is as um, a, a tech bro or a tech sis, <laughs> you have to ensure that customer satisfaction is always paramount. Three major pillars here, first, they have to be satisfied. Your client needs to trust you and you need them to stay loyal to you. They need to be satisfied because if your products or your services does not meet their needs, they're on the bus to the next person offering that same service or they're picking up their phones and trying someone else out. I mean, it's like buying shawarma um, from a vendor and you don't get what you want. Obviously, you're on Instagram the next minute looking for the next best person. So when your customer is satisfied, you earn their trust. Now, when your customer trusts you, 
they believe they can rely on what you're offering them. So I have a shirt on right now. If this shirt rips for whatever reason, unexpectedly, I'm obviously not going to purchase this shirt from the same vendor that supplied me the last time. But if this shirt can serve the purpose for which I want it to, I am going back to the same shop to get another one because I believe that it's trustworthy and I can rely on the fact that it can actually cover my body. Next thing is loyalty. So in the world of um, technology and business as well, you have to ensure that your customers remain loyal to you because that's when your returns keep coming in. So um, tech is not looking for a one-stop market. Tech is not about offering a service to um, a client and the next day you're looking for another one. No, the bulk of the business and returns comes from repeated purchases and repeated um, clientele, retainers of the same clientele over and over again. I mean, imagine if MTN has a new customer every single day. Eventually, they would have just about 100 customers per day. But MTN can boast of millions and hundreds of millions of customers because more people are joining in. People and they have more people joining in than they have dropping out. And um, number two, maintaining a competitive edge. So it's not just enough to end the trust of your clients. You have to stay ahead of the game because in tech, your idea is only your idea for about a minute. As soon as that idea comes to light, someone else is trying it. I mean, we're all here when ChatGPT came out and within weeks, we have so many other GPTs and other AI models out there in the market. So to ensure that you retain competitive edge, there are some points that I have found to actually work over time in my role as um, a quality assurance expert. So first, your product or your service has to be user-friendly. Let me give you a quick explanation to that. Um, if I'm signing up to an app that you have built or I have built, I should not have to start looking for the sign up button. I should not have to start um, struggling with authentication. The app has got to be user friendly. So another example, in my role as the head of instruction at Early Founders, parents wanting to sign their children up for our coding classes do not want to have to go through this stress. of setting up need their children to have. Secondly, hello, can you hear me? Yes, um, I don't okay. know if it's just from the end. Okay, your screen is now visible. All right, sorry for the disruption. So I was saying, um, I was sent along with a team to go and set up the office in the eastern part of the country, majorly because we needed to ensure high quality service. So whenever you're going into a new market, whenever you're launching out um, a product or a service, you have to ensure that everyone you're going to be interfacing with client-wise, business-wise, have to meet the best of the best part of you and it has to be reliable, which means um, I'm not seeing the best of you today and tomorrow I'm having to reach out to customer care to talk about how disappointed I am or to talk about also revisiting our initial agreements because some certain points have not been met, expectations have been dropped down. So maintaining a competitive edge requires you to have a user-friendly service or product, high quality delivery and reliability as a service towards the market. Number three, continuous improvement. So on the back of the last example I gave, we've been in that part of the country for um, close to three months now, let's say 
possibly nine weeks already. And I tell you, over the last couple of weeks, we've been iterating our process back to back. We've been trying to see how best we can serve our clients. We've been seeing how best we can onboard new people and make them aware of the services we offer in that particular city. So people are flying all the way to Lagos, Abuja to get the same quality that we're not delivering in their city. And we are thinking, look, how do we get these guys to believe that, yes, the same quality you're getting in Lagos, the same quality you're getting outside of Nigeria is right here in your city. That happens because we, ha we are continuously improving our process. We check on the customer feedback from the clients we have right now. We analyze their concerns and we ensure that we map out areas of improvement, which we take very, very much to add and we implement them almost as soon as we get solutions. Next, compliance and standards. So it's not just enough to have a bright idea. It's not just enough to launch a product or a service. It's even more important to comply with the laws of the nation. So um, this, this is predominant in our country, Nigeria. Most of us have not read the constitution, you know. Uh, I think it was during the, the Sabino's issue when um, someone used his something huge um, phrase and they were quickly sued by Sabinus asking them to pay a huge sum of money. That's when most people were aware of copyright laws and trademarks. So you have to ensure that what you're doing is not copyrighted or trademarked by another organization or another company. You have or we all have to actually stay compliant to the laws of the nation. Quality assurance, make sure that we do not fall short of all of this and there is no oversight on compliance to laws and standards. Now, for instance, um, for persons launching products and um, services in the FinTech, there are certain um, laws and standards that the Ministry of um, Finance expects to be upheld in by your product or by your service, you have to be aware of them. We have to be conscious of them and ensure that we do not fall short of all of those expectations. Otherwise, serving your customers could be great, but at the same time, you could wake up one day and the business is shut down because of this oversight. Number five, the integration of Agile and DevOps. So quality assurance also makes um, important note of ensuring agile methodologies are being implemented while building products and services. So you see some products are announced, um, let's say for instance, first quarter, and they are not rolled out until probably the, the year after that or the last quarter of that year when people have built expectations, people have built anticipation towards it. This um, aspect actually ensures that you meet up with deadlines, ensure that you maintain timelines and roll out um, products as at when due, working hand in hand with the dev teams, ensuring that the entire life cycle of a project is met and kept too, so that your client base, your customers could get what they are promised as at when due. Next very, very key element of quality assurance is the user experience focus. So quality assurance is also very, very big on the user experience. You'd um, agree with me that um, our social media, our typical apps on our phones, each time you click open the App Store or the Play Store, there are updates available almost every day because these companies are working tirelessly to iterate their process, to find out what suits their customers, to ensure that they provide exactly what puts a smile on their client's face. So you have a great idea, I have a great idea, but it's all in our head. Okay, people also have a picture, they also have an expectation and they are looking forward to the effective delivery of what's on their mind. You know, people have dreams that they want others to interpret. Um, they, they, they have ideas that they want to just pop up when they wake up or when they stand up from bed. It's the job of quality assurance to ensure that we make that happen. And lastly, we ensure that decision making while um, working in this environment or in this world of technology 
has to be driven by data. Data does not lie. I mean, um, take for, for example, um, what we do here at Early Founders, we constantly iterate our curriculum. We constantly update our curriculum. As soon as we get feedbacks from parents, schools, educators, um, STEM clubs who take our licenses, who, who license our curriculum and use them. We take feedback from them. That is raw data that we use to make our processes better. We do not just rely on what we know already. We do not just take to the market what we have in our heads. We take feedback as data and ensure that every decision we make is actually in line with meeting the needs and expectations of everyone in that market. So thank you very much. Um, these are actually just um, pointers to pave a way and a form of roadmap for everyone getting into this world to ensure that um, we meet the key performance indicators for our life cycle as um, tech founders or as tech bros, tech C's coming into this world and this community. We, um, it's just a brief insight into what it's going to be like to ensure that you stand out and um, you prove that your service is excellent and all of that. Thank you very much, John. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daniel. I think that was a very, very enlightening session, taking us through an overview of um, the quality assurance learning track. And I'm sure um, our audience listening to our fellows would have gained something from that. And, and don't forget to leave your comments in the chat section if you do have any about this um fields right so i'll be coming back to you ahmed um so far whilst the presentation was going on we've had a number of questions in the chat section um you know people wanting to know more about the product management field so there's a question that goes this way it says what's the difference between a product manager and a pro project manager. And I'm thinking you should also include program management because you know these three Ps usually confuse people sometimes. Product management, project management, and program management. What is the difference? Okay, so funny enough, I've been three of this, I've been in this three of these roles, right? And the first one, which is often confused, is um, project manager and product manager. Now, as a project manager, there's some limitations as to where you can work, right? But also, as a project manager, the key difference between a project manager and a product manager is that as a product manager, when you start building a product, you don't stop even after that product, even after the product has been shipped out. You don't stop. In fact, you start to get user feedback from there and start over again in order to improve the product. Maybe this is why you have various versions of software updates or mobile apps. That's why you have iPhone 10, iPhone 11, iPhone 12, iPhone 13. I don't know if you guys are understanding me, but as a project manager, you want I want to build a house. So I'm going to get someone to manage all the people, the contractors, I mean the the architect, the builders, right? Those doing painting, those doing uh, the builders. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. A project manager. So once that house is built, right, the work of a project manager is done. I don't know if you understand. So these are the two differences, or the key difference, rather. A product manager, your work doesn't stop when your product is done or built. Your work doesn't stop there. You have to go ahead and start using data to analyze our collect feedback and measure impact and then improve the products. But as a project manager, your work stops there, right? Once the project is done, it's delivered That's all. So these are just the key differences, right? Then a program manager usually is someone who also design products, but service-based products. So you find them working in organizations like um, NGOs mostly, so they are the ones that design programs like this three MTT program that you're seeing or initiative. It's the work of a program manager to come down, to come and sit down and design this program from inception 
or the, yes, inception to implementation and to that program with end and then posts implementation monitoring or M and E or monitoring and evaluation. So the program manager, their work is around programs. They design, they create, they develop programs. They find partners, they find resources. It's it's a prog pro program like this one. Uh, they, 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 they work with uh, training providers. They work with uh, institutions that provide job employment. I don't know if you're getting what I'm trying to say. So it's a little bit different between the three. And sometimes it's a little bit confusing. I get it. But it, it, they are all three different uh, uh, career paths. I hope that helps. Yes, I, I believe um, you did justice to that question. There's another one that says here, um, can product management be related to business analytics? Well, they intersect, but they're also not the same. A, a business analyst focus solely on the business and it's just beyond the products, right? While the product manager is mostly focused on the product itself. So they intersect in some ways such that the product manager may want to understand the business, you know, how people are interacting with the product, uh, how they buy it, you know, you know where, the, where they make their purchases and all that. But it's not up to him to use their data to improve the business. The data is to improve the product. While business analysts, you look at all the various aspects of the, of the business itself. Which includes, you know, the products and all other aspects that that relate to the business. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, there's also another question here that says, um, "What's what are the qualifications required to transition to be a product manager?" Hmm. So, um. I'm not, I'm not one of those people that, that always say you need to be technical. Those that are technical and those that, that are non-technical. Some people started coding. That's, they started building softwares and then decided that, okay, build better softwares or set a better products. So they switched into a product management role. So those kind of people are called technical product managers. They don't know how to code. They have a little bit of, they may not even know how to do wire framing and design. Of course, these are essential tools that you need. But then for you to be able to transition, I think the most important thing for you to is, is to be passionate about, you know, building great products. You should be adaptable, ready to learn. And then some of the skills that we mentioned earlier during my presentation, such as communication, critical thinking, and analytical thinking, leadership skills. These are some of the things that you really need to improve yourself. Always keep learning, and you can always you know, become a very good product manager. Thank you for that. There's also another one that says, um, can one practice product management as a freelancer? Yeah. It's very possible. So product management is, like I said, it's a versatile and dynamic field. You can, you can get full-time employment in, in an organization or a company. You can also get a contract-based employment in an organization and a company. But you can also freelance product management. It's, for example, I, I don't have a company, but I want to build an app. And I'm looking for, I've already gotten a software developer and, and you know, put my team together. But I want someone to be there to ensure that this product is being built right. So I get a product manager and I tell the person, okay, this is a freelance role. The project will take only eight months. You can come in to help me to build the product. It's very possible. Thank you for that. Um, someone is also asking, what are some tools used as a product manager in customer feedback and survey? Well, uh, customer feedbacks and surveys are they are usually forms that you use, but there are also platforms that you can use, right? To hot jar, uh, you know, there are a lot of platforms that are built complex softwares that you can imbue, you can build within your solution. But 
for me, uh, the best way to collect customer is but it's face to face with the customer, talking with the customer and understand, getting their feedback, right? But also, it's not always all the time. Like WhatsApp is a very large company. They have they have billions of users. They can't be talking to this all these users. So that's why sometimes you on the app, you you especially maybe when you finish a WhatsApp phone call. I'm sure some of you must have seen, you know, a little box pop up asking you to rate the, the that combo, that phone call, probably even type in your feedback. So there are various ways to do collect feedback. Sometimes you can even build it yourself, custom so custom like user feedback solution. And you could even run a Google form <laughs> if you know where your customers are or where you can get them. Okay. Um, am I still audible or are you speaking? Okay. Okay. Great. Um. So thank you, thank you, Ahmed, for that. We have some questions on um quality assurance that I'll be throwing at Daniel. So there's a question here that says, "How does one conduct quality assessments?" Okay, great. So quality assessment basically has to do first with what you set out to do. So what's the um, purpose? What's your why? For instance, we at Early Founders, we teach coding and innovation to children. So if we want to assess that process, we need to assess their learning process and assess their pace of learning. We check them through assignments, through projects. Um, okay, let's take, for instance, a fintech app. So you want to assess a fintech app. You need to check to see if it actually meets the needs of the customers or the clients. You need to check if what um, tra the transactions they are making daily is actually coming through to see that um, they are making progress, they are getting results for their money, Actually, so now um, key factors or key points to note while conducting quality assessment is to see if um, satisfaction, um, user friendliness, and to ensure that they can rely on your product or your service. Those are very, very important factors to assess while working with clients or customers. I hope that answers it. Great, thank you so much, um, Daniel. Um, someone is asking, what is the difference between quality assurance and quality control? Okay, quality assurance and quality control. Hmm. So quality assurance, I would say from my experience is basically before the product gets out, before the service is, um is is being meted out you need to ensure that in house and um, within the team within the company all that um your kpis everything is actually met and it's on point you need to ensure that you you meet your timelines the life cycle of that project is actually complete now quality control is when it's out already when it's out there you need to ensure that it's actually serving the purpose so there's quality assurance in-house and there's quality control of your products while it is already meeting the needs of clients. So um, you're, you're, you're working for a company or you founded your own company, you've rolled out your product, good. It's, it's not time to retire. It's not time to sit and relax. And relax. It's actually even more time or it, it requires more work for you to now ensure that that service is meeting the needs of the clients and the customers. Thank you for that. There's also a question that says, as a software developer, can one fit in as a quality assurance manager? Oh, yes, actually, um, strongly advise. I would strongly advise that, actually, because um, you see, the, the, the successful founders, successful entrepreneurs um, in the tech industry are actually people who are big on quality assurance. I learned this from my founder, um, the founder of my company and CEO, David Ogunshola. Um, that was one of the driving factors that pushed me to where I am today. You know, you need to ensure that 
day in, day out, minute in, minute out, every second you're checking your customer satisfaction, you're checking that your product is meeting the needs. So yes, um, as, as an engineer, as a software developer, your job is almost complete when the product is launched, but continuous um, improvement and iteration makes you um, trustworthy and puts you on a path to success as an individual. So you might be great working in a team, you might be great working in a company, but if you have dreams of becoming a founder, you have dreams of leading your own business someday, you have to ensure quality assurance of your product yourself. Great, thank you. Um, there's a question here that says, for quality assurance, what is the difference between compliance and standard and user experience focus? Okay, so for compliance and standards, um, like I'd explained earlier, every um, industry has their standards to be met. So tech on its own is not an industry. Tech is an enabler, okay? So tech can fit into almost any industry. Um, the, the health industry, finance industry, agriculture, tech fits everywhere. But you would agree with me that the laws governing agriculture are not the same laws governing finance. They're not the same laws governing health. So you have to be conversant with those standards and ensure that your product or your service is complying with those standards. So compliance and standards go hand in hand. There's no uh, major difference between them. When you know the standards, then you ensure that you're complying with them as a company, as a team, as a product, and as a service. And user-friendly focus is ensuring that all that you do is driven by the data of your users. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I don't know if this is a question, right? This person is asking, um, what are the types of quality assurance? Types then, of quality assurance. Um, yeah. I would say it's still going to boil down to your individual product or service. So every product and service is different, peculiar, unique on their own. So your quality assurance definitely is going to be um, different from others. And you have to know your why and understand exactly what you need to focus on as an individual, as a company, or as a service. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'll be coming back to you, Ahmed. We have a question here that says, how do one get internships to develop skills as a product manager? Hmm. Well, I feel like the best way to get into any internship is to do it yourself, especially as a product manager. You, you, you would have to force volunteer, not even, it's either you volunteer with a team, you know, and just try to learn the ropes from if they have a product manager and if they don't have, just try to, you know, learn the, you know, as a product manager who probably has the theory, you can then start to, you know, learn the practical side of it, right? But also the best way to learn for me, the best way I've learned is because I've been able to build or be part of products that have been built. Like I just joined teams and they started learning how to build products. Actually, I, for me, I started even product management before I knew there was a role that was titled product management, right? So I have built websites, I have built uh, mobile apps and stuff like that. And it's eventually I learned that there's actually a role called product management that you, know, that you, you learn to do this. So uh, for internships, uh, I'll have to be realistic. Uh, in this country, no one is looking for people that are not skilled talent or talented or able to contribute into you know any organizational setting so that's why you need to come with something that they'll be interested in it's either you build something on your own before or you've joined you know you volunteer somewhere and you can actually use that on your resume and say that look i was part of the people that built this product and this was my role i was a volunteer but i was a product manager and then a lot of people might be able to give you internship and even you know full time job uh, opportunities. Thank you.
Thank you for sharing that, Ahmed. A question here says, what are some constraints attached to product management? Constraint? Well, the, 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 there's no, you know, there's no career opportunity or, or anything that doesn't have its challenges or constraints, right? So, and for me, I, I think my, my greatest constraint hasn't been in, is also, is always probably the inability for, for me to get the right kind of resources and tools I need, right? But then one way I've been able to overcome that is I've become very persistent. I I really devour the internet for anything I can find on product management. I reach out to people that are already doing it or I see them, you know, you know, building products. So there's a lot of constraint, but you also there's also a lot of ways that you can actually overcome them. It has to do with who you are as a person and your ability and willingness to be able to overcome those constraints. Okay, thank you. Um, the, someone is asking, can a product manager access a NAVDAC re registration number on all products? I don't understand what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the mistake people make. And, I, you know, I actually made, I don't know if I should show my slide again. A product is, you know, in Nigeria, when they say products, we usually just take it into certain we relate it into certain aspects. And like I said, a product could be physical, it could be digital, it could be a service, and it could be an experience, right? So being a product manager doesn't really have anything to do with, you can be a product manager in a, pharmace in a pharmaceutical company, but I don't know if you could be a product manager with NAFDA. <laughs> I don't really understand what that means. We would invite a NAFDAQ uh, official on our next webinar to answer that. Anyways, moving on. Um, there's also a question here that says, how long does it take to become a professional product manager? Oh, first thing. So most of the most most of the courses you take will take you around between three months to six months. Right? I think three months generally for you to be certified or, or six months, depending on you know how can you hear me? I can't see your video though. So. Yes, yes, I can. Okay. So you you give or take three to six months. That's for the certification. But product management as a role is is a lifelong or life role. It's a field that keeps evolving and changing. New technologies, you know, different ways to solve problems, you know, uh, the stakeholders you're working with. So uh, I would say. If you're looking for a timeline for you to get certified, three months to six months. But as a role, like I said, you it's a long, it's a lifelong role. It's something you, you just keep doing and keep improving, keep learning, and keep being better at. So I think that's my response. Okay. We also have another question that says, as a beginner, what will be the challenges of a product manager? Wow. Honestly, product management is a very sweet role. I can tell you that for free. It's very, very sweet. Especially when you start building product, you you take my word for it. You remember, you remember that I told you that. But then as a beginner, it's it, it doesn't matter, regardless of whatever field that you're in. I think there's always going to be challenges. And this can be based on who you are. You could your challenges might be unique to you, right? I know for some people who don't have access to a laptop to learn and everything, but then you could always use your phone, right? And then some people don't have basic design because there's you have to do some sort of wireframing. Sometimes you just have to start with pen and paper. Also, you need to maybe if you you want to actually, you know, be able to compete with other people across the globe, you need to start using, you know, a digital software tools for design and everything. But Product management is a very straightforward, you know, it's not really straightforward. It's, there's, there's still a lot of tools that you need to learn, a lot of frameworks, actually. Product management is a field that's filled with frameworks on how to arrive at, mm -hmm. you know, a, a solution or a product. So you just have to learn to 
to for me the, the best advice I'll give you is yes, you're going to face challenges, but just be consistent, be persistent, ensure that you are able to overcome them regardless of whatever situation you find yourself in. Okay, thank you so much, Ahmed. I'd like to take this final question and then you give out any um final words of advice to our fellows listening. So the question says, product design and product management, are they the same? No, they're not the same. But, you know, like I said, as a product manager, you work with everybody. You work with the product designer, you work with... Uh, with with software developers, you work with quality assurance engineers. Design can also is also known as UI UX, right? And some people may know it as UI UX or product design. Is I like to call them glorified graphic designers, right? <laughs> people who have evolved from designing flyers to designing web apps, you know, user interfaces for for web application and mobile applications. And you know all other interfaces for your smartwatch and a host of whatever. So they are not the same. But then in product management, it's the work of the product manager and the product designer to sit down and say, "This is where this button needs to be. This is the color that we need to use, right? This is how the drop down needs to be. This is the experience. If a customer enters the sign up page." He should go to the dashboard instead of to their profile. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. So the product manager and the product designer come together to you know work on the solution, the product itself, but they are not, they don't do the same thing. Once it's the de design time, this is where the product designer steps in and then he takes over. And they are the ones in charge of bringing out, you know, the visual aspect of the product. Because for the first line of code is written. So imagine your WhatsApp was just screenshots from an app that was not built. So the person in charge of doing that is the product designer. So once that is done, this is where the software guys will now sit down and code this particular app to make it responsive or interactive rather. So Thank I don't know if so that much. helps. Yeah, yeah, I believe it does. Do you have any um final words of advice you'd like to give to you know aspiring product management managers who are listening today? Well, my my one piece of advice for would be tied to this particular training, which is please give it your shot because to be honest with you, it's uh you you hardly get an opportunity to for you to you know go into this field. You know, without you taking money from your pocket to pay for, you know, paid courses and stuff like that. And the government is already doing that for you. So they've already paid on your behalf. Take it seriously. And to be honest, program management is really a very lucrative field. Uh, you can become employed in less than a year. If you're good at what you're doing and you are dedicated and committed, you could be earning a very good salary by the end of 2024. I mean it. So, you know, just give it your best shots and I wish you all the best in your learning journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that was very inspiring. Um, so over to you, Daniel. There's a question here that says, does quality assurance and control involve the use of writing codes or programming languages? Okay, um, yes. Um, it's quite unique to your team, unique to your product and your service. For instance, my role at Early Founders right now, um, I don't need to write codes to ensure quality assurance. But at DevShoot, the parent company that gave birth to Early Founders, we build software actively. And on the dev team, we have um, quality assurance testers who actually are involved in the process of writing the codes and ensuring that the product meets excellence and it meets the required need. So the um, DevOps team have what we call um, quality assurance testing. It's much more predominant in um, foreign countries for now, but you need someone who tests and vets the code to ensure that it's actually meeting the 
the quality and assuring um, the, the team that as soon as it gets to the end users, it's going to meet their needs. So for the engineering team, there has to be someone who is um, ensuring quality of the code, testing the code to ensure that it meets quality and assuring um, the end users that their, their product will actually um, meet all expectations. I hope I answered that properly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. So do you have any um, final word of advice for you know aspiring quality assurance fellows who are listening today on this webinar? Uh, okay. Um, I, I won't say it's a final word of advice. Um, actually, um, the world of tech, the community of tech actually relies hugely and uh, majorly on community. We thrive on community. So uh, I just put up the slide with my contact. Actually, you can actually reach me either by mail. I'm very, very active on social media. I run podcasts. Um, I am involved in many of the processes on social media. So you could just hit me up. Collaboration is very, very important in tech. So um, it shouldn't stop here. Okay, find experts, find people who have the required knowledge you need at every time. If you need to hire professionals, okay, um, you can't know it all. No one is an island of knowledge. No one, no one, um, Rome was not built in a day in, in essence, okay? So as much as possible, always find people to work with, leverage industries, leverage GitHub, um, leverage, communities online, there's, there's a robust community on um, X, there's a robust community on LinkedIn, connect with persons, ensure that you are actively learning. So aside from the, the learning processes that um, the fellows are involved in right now, personalized learning that you're involved in, collaborate with people, work with teams, reach out to people in your fields, reach out to people even outside of your field because you never could tell where you might interface with people here and there, ensure that you're actively socializing and networking to make your process better. Thank you, thank you so much. Very special thanks to our facilitators, Ahmed and Daniel. A lot has been said so far um, around quality assurance and product management. And I hope that to everyone listening out there to our fellows who are commencing their cohorts very soon, I hope you have learned a thing or two. I hope you are you know, better equipped to embark on your journey as either a product manager or a quality assurance specialist. Um, yes, thank you so much everyone for joining us today. And we'll be drawing the curtains on the webinar here today. Until next time, thank you for joining us. I'll see you again. Pleasure to be here. Thank you.